Hello and welcome Universe Mode, this is Night Raw, we are on our way now towards Wrestlemania, we're only four, three and a half weeks away, can you feel the excitement building up within you, because I know I can, especially on Raw where all sorts of things are going all sorts of pear shape, there's challenges coming out of the orifices left, right and centre, and tonight is going to be a night where we see all challengers and champion of the World Heavyweight Championship in action it is going to be a quote-unquote punishment night for Adam Cole as he runs the gauntlet to close out Monday Night Raw here tonight first he's got Jinder Mahal the man who he has dreamt of getting his hands on from the very night that he lost that World Heavyweight Championship to Erwin Armageddon now Cole gets his hands on him but he's got to play it safe he can't go overboard no matter how much he wants to lash out on Jinder Mahal because he's got the villain to worry about after it right away no rest no break Marty Skrull will make his way to the ring to face Adam Cole the punishment has come for Adam Cole it is time for him to suffer in some ways for whatever crimes he has committed to be fair and not as the biggest Adam Cole fan I don't really know what he's done but certainly he has got Jinder Mahal a man who he is desiring to get his hands on and none other than Marty Skrull but before we get to any of that, before we tackle that main event here tonight, we are opening things up with, as you can see, the Raw General Manager. He's brought his headset out to the ring just so I can hear him as well. Oh, he just doesn't know how simple things work like that. He is a one-glove man, and he's here to deliver some update regarding Raw as a whole, and more specifically, as I've heard, the United States Championship Division, as I hear down the grapevine. Before uh, I keep on going on, let's take it to the Raw General Manager, Daro Manalo. Hello and welcome to Monday Night Raw. Now believe me, I could go on and on and on and on about myself and Lars Sullivan, but I have an event to plug and an announcement to make. The announcement regarding the US title and that event, Wrestlemania. Now believe me, being a promoter is no easy business. And when it comes to United States Championship, I just don't think Cody Rhodes can bring in the bills against Aiden English. So that is why at WrestleMania, I will be adding six other men, creating an eight-man ladder match for the United States Championship. As for those six other men, it should go without saying that my best friend Lars Sullivan will be amongst the group. And one of the other five will be having a match against Cody Rhodes tonight. That man being the former United States and World Heavyweight Champion, Tyler Breeze. With that being said, enjoy the show. And there he is. He said some words and now I'm going to have to wait about 50 years for him to make it up to the commentary box. There we go. Big updates though. WrestleMania is about to get hit with a big time matchup there for the United States Championship. Daro Nalo for all the controversy surrounding him right now is doing a pretty damn good job of stacking the mania card in the raw side of things although the world heavyweight championship division is not exactly being stacked on his own behalf the u.s title certainly is he will be making his way of course up here in a short little while but oh boy christmas came early again happy days have arrived let the joys and celebration ring true Gallows and Anderson are in town. Throw up a two somebody, sweet somebody for the good brothers. Somebody fixed that nameplate. Did, did you get? Did you get? Did you see that nameplate? I did. I'm disgusted by it personally. Somebody's getting fired. I'm Dar Ronaldo, but you already knew that. Howdy. Yeah, I said you in that three times. Yeah. Yeah. Here come the men. Not addressed as the Bullet Club. I, I just clear that up now. Times have passed. Well, it's about time. It's know? not about the Bullet Club anymore. They don't want to hang on to the, the coattails of something while as great as it was has passed its due course. Gallows and Anderson, the good brothers. So there's kind of uh, like a... Here again. I wouldn't say like a new coat of paint, but it's almost like just changing the name of your boat, you know? Mm. Basically, so they still what look they've the done is it's the same building. They've just painted over the name. However, behind that name, you can still see the etchlings of the Bullet Club. But they warm my heart to see. Street, and across the street from that building is this man. This is this sort of cult, I guess you could say. You know, the brood. And I don't know about you, but I think tonight, Team Brood is taking it. 
Well, I mean, it's a one-on-one -on -one match, so I don't know how a team is going to take it to well, for directly the... insult your words, but I get exactly what you mean. Carl Anderson does have a, a tricky situation in his way here in the form of the big red monster Kane, accompanied, of course, by The Undertaker, the World Tag Team Champions who were hit with a stunning surprise two weeks ago, as we all were when the Bullet Club rolled, um, Gallows and Anderson rolled back into town. The Good Brothers stunned me, stunned Raw, stunned you, stunned the world in their return. And you gotta admit, you, you know, you you always said you had respect for these guys. You gotta admit, it's good for them to be back. Well, I kinda have to agree with you there, because when I think about it, who else could have possibly came out Monday night and beat the Brood? I can't think of anyone. Maybe the Young Bucks. They are the greatest tag team, but, you know. Yeah, they are the most dangerous tag team on SmackDown. So, I gotta ask... <laughs> Who are you taking here? Because I know you like to you like to cheer for the Bullet Club just as much as the next guy, but Carl Anderson is a pretty small dude, and Kane is a pretty uh, big. That dude. I do agree with you, um, but but yeah, I'm gonna play my cards close to my chest, see what's going on. Because after all, you know Kane is is, is a dangerous singles athlete. Carl Anderson is very much so known for his uh, tag team endeavors. So. Certainly advantage Kane, but never count out what the Good Brothers can bring to the table. Um, one thing I'd like to put in here is that, mm. you know, the Bullet Club, let's be real, they weren't too fond of playing by the rules, you know? And now that we've yeah. seen the Good Brothers come back, are they going to stick to those roots? Or are they going to try and, you know, give it their all, staying within the bounds of wrestling? Well, I mean... Since they've come back, it, it, it almost seems like whatever they'll do, the, the same things will reign true as Machine Gun comes out there from Carl Anderson. Um, you know, they, they could bend the rules as much as they want. They could follow the rules as much as they want. I still think wherever they go, they're going to be one of the loudest cheers act of the night. Just because everyone loves these two guys. And let's be honest, if you bend the rules against a team like the Brood, are you really going to be that, you know, that... Looking down upon them if Carl Anderson did break a rule against Kane. I mean, you know, he's got to do... You know, you've, you've got to take some kind of action. You've got to try and twist some rules to try well, and I get mean, a victory over well, the I team mean, like the Brute. Well, I mean, kind of, Larry. I mean, they are the rules, after all. And, and but, nobody... Do you think Lars Sullivan would break the rules? I mean, Lars Sullivan isn't Carl Anderson. He wouldn't Anderson. break the rules. He also wouldn't break the finals bracket of King of the Ring, but, you know. He won King of the Ring for the Raw brand. That means nothing. It means everything and more. Because we're on Raw tonight. But this isn't about Raw. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> it absolutely know, not, is. Not everyone is perfect. I'm just getting that out right now. But I am pretty damn close. Okay. Anyway, um, no, I don't know. I think they'll stay pretty close to the rules in all honesty. I think they've learned from their mistakes. They know where they belong, and, you know, they're, they're just happy. I, I know for a fact they're happy to be back. I'm, I'm, gonna I'm looking it at it right a... now. <clears throat> I think I was about to say, I think we were both about to say the same thing, then. I think we were both about to praise Carl Anderson for the job he's doing. Yeah, uh, he's really going out with a very explosive style tonight, you know. I think he realizes that he doesn't have Carl Anderson. I mean, he doesn't have Luke Gallows in the corner to tag into. Mm -hmm. So he's got to give it everything he's got from the moment the bell rings. Oh, Carl Anson does great there. Gunston! This could can be the it. element of surprise get the win? Oh, it can! They're 2-0 oh. against the Brood in the last two weeks. Um, oh, my good brothers. There's okay, only I'm, one road for them to go down. I'm a little I'm a little stumped right there. I, I wasn't that was like out of nowhere almost. Do you know what the problem is right now? The Brood are complacent. The Brood have let themselves dominate Raw for as long as they have, and they're happy to keep on rolling in this way. But Gallows and Anderson have walked back into town. They haven't walked back into town. They've run back into town, kicked down the doors, and have gone right for the owner. They want this place back, and 
the Brood are just acting like they won't put up a fight. Well, news flash, guys. They're back in town, and they ain't taking no for an answer, and they will destroy everything in their path until that ownership is back under their name. And, of course, by ownership, I mean the World Tag Team titles. The Brood have got sloppy. Gallows and Anderson are the fine wine of this division. <sighs> I really got to screw with that long-ass uh, paragraph you went going there, buddy. They got more than a chip on their shoulder. They got the whole back. They are right now, whatever other euphemism you want to use, the ball is in their court. They are completely in the driving seat right now. And honestly, after that, with you here watching from the same position I am, we saw the same matchup, and I do truthfully believe that it is only a matter of time before we get that rematch at WrestleMania between the Brood and Gallows and Anderson. I'm just feeling that way. Now, you know, if they are going to have a rematch, and it's looking like they are, I don't see how it could be anywhere else than the grandest stage of them all. Exactly. And speaking of the grandest stage of them all, segue here. Here's a man who knows plenty about that event. Main evented last year's WrestleMania, did Tyler Breeze? And he won the main event. He won. Became the World Heavyweight Champion, defying all the odds. And the, of course, the Royal Rumble winner of this year, Kazuchika Ricardo will look to do the same in the main event of WrestleMania, but that is not in the mind of Breeze, and that is not in the mind of Cody Rhodes. Other things are, of course, on their minds. Um, just for curiosity's sake, what's Nakamura mm. doing this time of year? Nakamura, um, he's just chilling on SmackDown Live, really. SmackDown Live right now is uh, pretty stacked heading into WrestleMania, so he's kind of in the same place as Breeze, in all honesty. Well, There's not a fall from grace by any means for both guys, though, uh, before I let you get back to your point. It's not a fall from grace. It's just, you know, the roster now is so stacked, everyone's so hungry. But whenever these guys come out, you know they're going to put on a quality matchup, and you know you can put them anywhere on the show, and they have earned that right to be there. Right, right. And I think, but, um, uh... Well, no, I don't no, know. No, 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 no. I think Tyler's... You know, with my with my announcement, you know, at the start of Raw, maybe mm -hmm. Breeze has got another uh, WrestleMania moment coming up for him. Maybe so. I mean, Breeze and WrestleMania are going together like uh, peanut butter and jelly right now. 2-0 and at that event. First WrestleMania, captured the United States Championship. Second WrestleMania, World Heavyweight Championship. Could be a return to old ways for Tyler Breeze. I'd certainly be happy about that. And I tell you what, though. Going on about that, there is certainly one man who wants that U.S. title more than anyone else, and he's in the ring with Tyler Breeze. The referee? Yes, the referee. Well, he got to hold it a couple times, I'm pretty sure. He has. But I realized you were talking about Cody, <laughs> Cody Rhodes, and I'm not feeling Cody, going to be honest. He's kind of a loser. How can you... Wait, wait, How can you say that about Cody? This guy... Okay... Royal Rumble, maybe, yeah, you can let the night, you know, what happened on that night take effect. But he went out and destroyed Aiden English. And then last week in their title matchup, Aiden runs and gets himself disqualified within seconds. Literal yes, but, seconds. But, but the point you're missing here, Larry, is that Aiden English is still the United States champion. And the way it's looking right now, because he's not so foolish as to... Uh, open challenge every two weeks he's gonna be the United States champion going into Wrestlemania what happened to you the last time you were on this show you were in the same court as me on Aiden English well you know things change and you know what's he Aiden's done to prove himself hey Aiden has a very melodic voice is that the word? That That's has word. nothing to do with being U.S. champion. He brings an entertainment factor to Raw that no other superstar can, except maybe Lars Sullivan. He's a very good uh, chorus. I would, I would have assumed more bass vibes from him and his Amish culture. 
That hasn't been confirmed. Anyways. Hasn't been denied? Aiden English. <laughs> hasn't been denied, really. Aiden English you give me hasn't an been denied to... Uh, confirmed or denied to be a good US champ yet. It's definitely been confirmed a, as a weak no, one. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Not true. The Raw General Manager, Daro Ronaldo, Daro J. Ronaldo, has just confirmed Aiden English is a very good U.S. champion. Possibly better that than means, the last two U.S. champions. That means absolutely everything coming from a man with a shirt like that. You get one chance, unless you want to step into the ring with me at WrestleMania, Never insult my shirt again. That shirt. Jesus. Okay, Raw isn't about me most of the time, so I'm not going to challenge you to a match no, with media just yet. Yeah, don't challenge me anyways, too much. Anyways, anyways, let's, ha let's have a little fun. Let's have a little fun, right? Let's um, compare I am having fun. I'm watching this really interesting back and forth matchup between two old rivals who know each other inside and out. And Cody Rhodes is looking to fold Breeze inside and out, crossroads. But the same mistake that he has done over these last few weeks is coming into play. Too close to the ropes, doesn't hook the leg, costs him big time. That wouldn't have put away Breeze, but it's still a costly error. Well, I think after you've been through a, a bunch of slobber knockers with Aiden English, your mind game is all over the place now. I don't think it, I don't think Cody has it in him to win this match. I'm just I'm just mean. I think, if I was to agree with you on that point, it wouldn't be from the Aiden English perspective. It would be from the hunger for that US title. I think Cody has reached a, a stage now where he is so focused on nothing but the US title that if the match isn't about the US title, it can, it can cloud his emotions. It can force him to make mistakes. And there is a guy who you should never, ever make a mistake against, and that is Tyler Breeze. This is arguably one of the most successful guys in the history of this universe. He's won almost everything he can. And I, the only I, large act lady hasn't won that I can think of is the money in the bank. And you know, I agree with you 100% on Tyler Breeze, and that's why it makes it all the more pointless that you, that you insist on cheering this Cody Rhodes cat. Because Cody's a great guy. He's really talented. He's proved it in and out. He brought prestige to that US title. And he also lost the US title. To, if you really don't like Aiden English, he lost the belt to Aiden English and he couldn't get it back. Because of a disqualification. That's a huge difference. The match, you can't even argue that, oh, Aiden had it won or Cody had it won. Because the match didn't happen. Aiden ran, he bolted behind his stage hands, okay, grabbed okay. a chair and swung for the fences. Okay, so Co Cody even won the match, but he didn't win the, cha he didn't win the title. Yes. That's pathetic! I could win the match and win the title if I wanted to. And Cody couldn't no, even couldn't. do that. Yes, I could. Could you do that? Because that's going to hurt Cody in the morning, missing a moonsault like that. Breeze again, reading the game inside and out of Cody Rhodes. These two men have had so many battles down the line. They won at Armageddon for that US title. Almost stole the show on what was a huge night. Potentially even the, the greatest night for the Monday Night Raw. As a whole. And, and even throughout all their, uh, these two men, we also saw sort of a renaissance for Tyler Breeze. No more is he uh, as flashy as he once in his, no. in his heydays. It was Cody Rhodes who brought Breeze down to earth almost. The, the Prince Pretty is gone. It's all about this serious Tyler Breeze. Which, you know, props to Tyler Breeze oh. for finding Nirvana. Uh -oh. Tried to find Alabama Slam there with it. Couldn't get it. Supermodel kicked out by Tyler Breeze. The gimmick may be gone, but the names remain the same. And Breeze now prepped up and ready to go to give Rhodes a beauty shot. Well, I think that's going to be the end of it. I don't think so. I think Rhodes is going to be able to kick out of this. He has taken a number of these from Breeze in the past. And he will be able to kick out because there's one, two, and Rhodes stays alive. Disappointing, this it really is. Former world champion is... can't put away Cody Rhodes. Well, I mean, he did beat Aiden English, though. He did not. You even admitted it earlier that he beat Aiden English, you just didn't win the title. 
Well, if you didn't win the title, did you really win it all? Yes. Because it'll go down. In the, it'll but it'll go down the in the record. Yeah, but it'll go down in the record books. Cody Rhodes beat Aiden English by disqualification. It'll also go down in the records that he did not win the title. Aiden English stayed the. Okay, let me let me let me prove my point to you real quick. Okay, you ready? You ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready for you to contradict yourself. Go ahead. So we got Adam Cole, U.S. Champion. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you say that was a pretty decent reign? Yes. Okay, I gotta agree, even if I don't like Adam Cole. And then you have Aiden English. Uh, and you go back to Adam Cole, and he has the Bullet Club. You know? And mm. say what you want, they were dominant. But Aiden mm. English has the stage hands. No one knows or cares about them. Point proven. Not even Aiden can't English even cares that. about them. You can't even deny that. I can't deny that he has two guys by his side. You are correct. Yep. And those two that, guys... That, haven't that. turned on each other. The Bullet Club dissolved, really. Uh, right. That's a huge difference. Um, huge I think it's, difference. it's pretty objective. No. Huge difference. I would, you are, you know, I would argue with you, but you are too stupid to understand and you are trying to bait me into an argument. So I'm I not going to give you the time of day on that. I have one. a... I am here, unlike IQ. you, who is here to try and cause arguments and take away from the talent, I'm here to call matches. But of course you wouldn't know that because you're not here frequently enough. How long are you going to I'm not here for you. What happened to Raw isn't all about me. Why aren't we talking about the talent in the ring? Because I don't care about Bullet Cody Club Rhodes. Bullet Club is gone. I, I, don't, I don't care about Cody Rhodes. I don't care about you. I just have to put up with you. Comic drop by Tyler Breeze. These guys really been going back and forth since the bell rung to start this matchup. They've counted each other's uh, moves back and forth. There's another counter to the supermodel kick. Breeze gets out of the back. Suplex crucifix roll up here. Trying to find anything. Trying to find something original in the book. The put away road who kicks out at two. You know, massive props to, to Breeze here tonight. He really seems on his game. Breeze is always on his game. You don't become a two-time world champion by not being on your game all the time. And he knows that Breeze is trying everything that he can to put away Cody for good year. Because these two men have been going back and forth. And oh! Element of surprise. Didn't wait to try it. Just hit it again. And beauty shot lands. Rushing in all the big moves at the last moment. Almost working to a climax. Instead of spacing himself out, Breeze just went all out on it. Just fired the heavy artillery without preparing for any sort of battle, and it paid off. You know, massive props to Tyler Breeze, really picking in a big win. It almost, it's true, almost redoing history. A true counter-attack by Breeze. When you thought he was gonna try and wait for that chance, he just sprung and took it in his stride. Breeze, yo, whoa, whoa, yes. whoa, whoa. Yeah, it was whoa. the plan the whole time, the whole time. I had you distracted with, oh, I don't like Cody Rhodes. Oh, I love Eden English. It was all about Lars Sullivan. <laughs> I still don't care. You're such anyway. a fool. You're such a fool. Shut the fuck up. Anyway. Well, I'm, I can't really say I'm surprised considering the sugar daddy is out here. Yes. Two babes in a bath going <laughs> along with one another as Lars Sullivan takes apart a weakened Tyler Breeze after that grueling match. And we'll finish him off. Freak accident. And if this was a singles match, it would be followed by a one, two, three. Well, it's not. It's a post-match attack after Tyler Breeze got the win. So, hey, as far as I'm concerned, Lars Sullivan just beat Tyler Breeze and Cody Rhodes. <laughs> yeah, well, you're stupid and blind, so I got it. Man, that so. man is gonna anyway, be the U.S. Tag team match time. Yeah. Another another error with the nameplate. Someone's getting fired. Kendrick and De Easel coming out here. Desolate. These two men. No, I, yeah. Yeah. They've been. Yeah. They haven't. They haven't been towards the top, but they haven't been rock bottom lately. They no. They've sit well in comparison to usual. They've been on a soaring, soaring height. Because Brian Kendrick, despite losing at Armageddon, has featured more than the uh, man who he beat at Armageddon. He's been really finding a way to keep himself occupied with people and staying on the show. Yeah. First with um, Daniel Bryan heading into Armageddon, now with Jeff Hardy, who he faces here tonight in the tag team matchup. 
you know, like him or hate him, he's really a... Uh, he's kind of pushing down Jeff Hardy, and that's what's keeping him afloat. I, I imagine also, if he was to sink, uh, that man to his left would do his best to put him on his back and keep swimming. Diesel is always, of course, at the back of the Brian Kendrick. He is paid to have the back of the Brian Kendrick. So, uh, I guess I'll give a little background before, you know, this next bit happens. Uh, Brian Kendrick, you know, I think he's, he's finally challenged uh, Jeff Hardy to a tag team match. Or rather, it was a handicap match, and it would become a tag team match if Jeff Hardy could find a partner. And he has found a partner. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So, um, Interesting. Um, I mean, I'm trying to go through people. I don't know. I mean, Jeff Hardy's been here a few weeks. Maybe he's already found some kindling relationships. Uh, my Hardy's certainly going to be nowhere to see after what happened on this past NXT where he was decimated by the NXT champion. Sheesh. Becoming even more broken than usual. But uh, Jeff Hardy has if he's found a partner. I'm interested to see what they can work together to uh, bring to the table here because they're going to need to bring something to the table to get past the big man that is Diesel. To right. get, in, the, in Jeff Hardy's case, to get to the Brian Kendrick. All right, that's a pretty good pick. I'll give him credit where credit's due. Yeah, there's not much I can say about that. That's a pretty good pick. Yep. Um, that's a solid choice. Cassius just... Ono towards the ring. Ono and Jeff Hardy. Interesting. I'd like, I like to complain it. and laugh as the next guy, but I mean... Can't deny Cash, it's just pretty good at what he does. And he has come to the age here of Jeff Hardy tonight. Yeah, I mean, two two really talented athletes in their own way. Jeff Hardy, one of the best, I guess, unorthodox guys that are on the roster. Uh, Cash is without a doubt one of the hardest strikers on the roster. Yeah, I kind of, I, I kind of like this dynamic, what it, what, it, what it kind of feels like, you know? Um... Cassius Ono is very exact, you know, very strong, mm -hmm. and I'd say Jeff Hardy is more of like an anarchist, you know, just kind of does whatever he can to win, and I think that's a pretty good combo. Do you know who else, though, in their own way, will do whatever it takes to win? That man who is not starting this matchup, even though Jeff Hardy is, the Brian Kendrick. He proved it a few weeks ago with his uh, use of the ropes to beat um, Randy Orton. Yeah, I kind of like, uh, like, like what Brian Kendrick has going on, you know? I, I agree. You know, I could sort of relate to the position of, oh, I have a really big guy next to me. I'll point at someone and he'll be dead in three minutes, you know? I, I'm like Brian Kendrick in a lot of ways. Brian Kendrick, ladies and gentlemen, just hit with the insult of the year by my co-commentator. Mm, I'm a general manager. I, I'm, I'm very successful. I'm gonna let that silence just play itself out. Right. Oh, you know, starting Back off to the match up at hand. Diesel and Jeff Hardy. I think from face value, Jeff Hardy, you know, kind of in a trouble spot here. I mean, I would attest the opposite. He beat Diesel last week, I think, in a singles match. So I think he's fine. Hmm. Well, he's even more know. fine now that he's bringing in his partner. To do some uh, know that, top rope maneuver. As, as the successful old general manager you are, you totally know that. But, oh no, in. And I like this little bit of year. They've got, uh, they're not fully matching, but they've got at least a little bit of matching attire going on between the two. Multicolored. It's kind of purple. Oh no, more of a blue, where Jeff Hardy's a purple. And of course, uh, Brian Kendrick and Diesel rocking the black and sort of black look, you know? Yeah, I mean, Kendrick got a bit of brown on his uh, very artistic attire of his, but hey, this, they, they still have that color in common. I sweep really the legs there again. Has a lot of black going on. But, uh, Diesel has uh, gone for that shoulder again there, but it's more it's much smarter with uh, Ono trying to take away the forearms and the, especially the KO. Cause if you, yeah, I agree. Because if you take away the arm of Jeff Hardy, he'll just throw his leg at you. He'll throw his back. Yeah, you, if you're going to ground a high flyer like Jeff Hardy can be, you don't take out his arm. You take out right. his legs. But with Ono, yeah, you take out the arms. Especially if it means when Kendrick's in the ring, he has a bit of assistance. But he ain't right now because there's a hard knee in the skull and all oh, a bicycle kick by Ono. And uh, 
<laughs> right as they tag into Kendrick, um, that's when Ono is taking the lead. Kind of shows a bit, doesn't it? What do you mean? Well, as soon as Diesel is out of the match, their team starts to... They were losing the edge a bit there. Of course, now they've regained it. So I guess my point is kind of ah, moved. Fr fresh man. Fresh man advantage. Oh, Kendrick already in the corner. The Kendrick Whoa. being struck. Hooks the legs there of Oh No. Didn't have his full body across, though. Only had the legs hooked, so he couldn't really keep Ono down for that three count. Hardy had but to be really a, confident there. That is a big move to hit. This early in the... Well, this early in... Certainly in the matchup for Kendrick, and now paying for a little bit there. Ono doing a number now on uh, Kendrick, but you know that Ono is not the... The man, in a way, that Kendrick should be worrying about. That man's on the apron. He's been wanting a piece of him since Kendrick started playing some mental math with him. What would you even call that powerbomb you just did? Uh, straight jacket, I guess. Ah. I think it's a straight... Yeah, straight jacket powerbomb. But here we go. This is what we've been waiting for. Hardy in now. Gets his hands on Kendrick again. You could almost say Jeff Hardy was taking some notes from uh, Ono right there. You know, going for a really stiff strike to the head. Oh, and Kendrick, no surprise. I mean, I know he was taking a beating, but the almost the first shot he could get out of dodge there. He takes it to get out of the ring from Jeff Hardy. Diesel back in now. Jeff with a splash, but let's be honest, if you, you know, hit the splash on a 7-foot, 300-plus pound guy like Diesel, ain't going to do the biggest amount of damage to him. Oh, especially when he comes back like that. Yeah, you can say what you want about Diesel, but that, that stamina he has is even more dangerous in a tag team match because now once he's running on E, he can just tag out and recharge. Hard elbow into the chest of Jeff Hardy as well. Diesel certainly bringing the, the power to this matchup in this moment. Out we go here into the turnbuckle. Tag made. What the hell are we looking at from these two men? The fuck? Uh, what the hell? Oh my god. What am I seeing? How long did that one take to practice? Cover after it. They're hoping it's enough. Jeff Hardy just kicks out. Diesel had oh no. Unable to make the tag in. But what was that? Could, could that be considered like they're... If they're finisher, <laughs> it looked like it because they thought the match was done I'm after it. Lot. Kendrick even went to the ropes again to hope that he was done after it. That was one hell of a move. Gonna, I mean, just to, just to take away from that move a sec. Think about what Kendrick did. He held Diesel up in a powerbomb position while he hit a superplex onto Jeff Hardy. It's incredible. I'll give Kendrick full props there. That was incredible. And Hardy now really feeling, I think, the effects of that unorthodox move, move, uh, move there. Had to make the tag out there into Ono. Ono going to look to strike right away here. KO in the back of the head. But he wants Hardy to have the spoils and the fruits of victory. He sets him up in place. Oh, the worst of the worst is coming Jeff Hardy's way. Oh, I've been Kendrick's way. Swanton Bomb. Cover that follows. Diesel saves it right away. So the outside, though, goes Diesel. Hardy hoping that he's still able to get the three count there, but it's not to be. Kick out at two by Kendrick. Just took too long. But Hardy now is proceeding to fight back here. Going through his repertoire. Move after move. Big drop kick there. He's on his own right now. Oh no, recovering on the outside. Twist of fate, and that could be enough after everything that Kendrick's been through. Oh no, sweeps the legs of Diesel, and it's enough for victory. Hardy and Oh no. Pick up the win over Kendrick and Diesel with a fine finishing sequence for the first tag match. These two guys have worked together on. They did a fine, fine number indeed on an established team like Kendrick and Diesel.
victory secured for Ono and Hardy. And they can certainly be happy about that one. To the aid can Cassius Ono, but to the victor goes Jeff Hardy. Well, we can't deny that Diesel and Kendrick certainly brought out some innovative offense to try and get the win themselves. That is certainly an interesting one. And in a way, with how well they teamed, I wouldn't be disappointed if I saw this duo come back together for a second time. Well, that'll be something for down the line. But right now, we have to deal with the present at hand. And the present currently revolves around the Raw Women's Champion, Rosemary, in response to Paige's win last week. She told her if you win, you get a title shot. Maybe. Well, Rosemary has a response lined up right now. And here she comes, the Raw Women's Champion. And she has been since December. Heads towards the ring for her response to Paige. You know that she is trying to play some mental mind games of her own. She always does it. She has the tendency to do it every time we ever see her. Two weeks ago, she played such mental mind games with Paige. She clocked her one with the microphone after she was done. And it has immediately gone into those mind games. It was nothing more than a trap, sh uh, uh, extending bait. And she is not giving her that title match she wanted. And in all fairness to Paige, there may not even be a rematch down the line. That is harsh by Rosemary and almost going across the line. Oh, maybe uh, maybe she is going back on herself. To be fair, with someone as fragile in the mind as Rosemary is, that's not really much of a surprise. But she has to go through one more, one more loss. That is harsh from Rosemary again, believing that she will flee from Raw after it. You see the words she's using, calling her dearest Paige once again. But how about that one? Next week, if you beat me, Drop me for three seconds, you get the title match. If you fail, enjoy the abyss. And that almost childlike response from Rosemary. Bye-bye. It could be Paige's bye-bye from a shot ever at that Raw Women's Championship again. But what really must be going through her mind right now, what really must be going through the mind of Paige, is if she wants a title match against Rosemary, she has to beat Rosemary. That is a tough order. That is a tall task for Paige to get to next week. But there is a tall order coming someone way right now. Adam Cole runs the gauntlet. Skirl up next, but right now, it's time for him and Jinder Mahal. Oh, I am feeling it. In my toes, from head to toe, all around the body, this is this man's big, big night. Gets his hands. No one gets it. This is this guy's big night. Two rivals. Two men I'm back that have and done wrong board. for Adam Cole. He gets his hands on both of them at the same time. Relatively. Same night. And he starts off with the man who this all began with. Adam Cole and Jinder Mahal one on one. Win or lose for Cole, it doesn't matter. Marty Skrull is up next. And Cole certainly wants a piece of Skrull on top of that. Jeez. Wouldn't it be embarrassing if you Gee, had a world wouldn't it be champion pretty embarrassing if you one match in the two months he's been a champ? And he's probably going to lose this first match. Because oh, he joined that prestigious list of Because he's about to lose Jinder to the Mahal, world Mahal, heavyweight belt, champion, like Jinder Orton. Mahal. No, I said when he won the belt. Like, as in, after he got the belt. Adam no. Cole. No, I did. I did not mean that. I mean, when he was officially declared when you say world when champion. He won the belt, you mean as he's winning the belt. You're the one who booked it. How about that? 
So why are you asking well, questions about even, your own booking? It's not my fault you're retarded match, in the brain you know? when it comes to booking. It's not my fault you're mentally deficient. Because you're stupid! You're insulting yourself! And now you're gonna, in about 20 seconds, praise the shit out of Jinder. Hey, you're getting really, yeah, really he's... mad, dude. Yeah, for... When's WrestleMania? Three and a half weeks. But you know who isn't about stupid? About Jinder 24, Mahal 25 days. is not stupid. Because he's the World Heavyweight Champion. Hey, might as well get fired up with you. I'm not gonna see you until WrestleMania. Ladies and gentlemen, the temper... Of Larry Zakrisco. Yeah, he's going great taking that German suplex. So? Great, great start. So, Jinder's already, uh, you know, starting off to a great start. It was one move. Can't be, ho can't be horses. We haven't and even got past the first like long yet. He's getting up. Adam Cole, though, Can't you can tell one, two, from one, the way two. in which he's going about it. This is all. This ain't wrestling to Cole. What? This is hatred. This is blood boiling through his veins right now as he shares the ring with the man who he has made public enemy number one for himself and the fans of Adam Cole since Armageddon. I may not be a fan of Adam Cole. I have attested to that on numerous occasions. But I sympathize with him on this matter. Didn't ask. And I can't say the same. But you did. You did ask. And that's why Jinder Mahal is about to hit the best DDT on the Raw brand. Happens, the villain is lying in the weights. You might as well pin him now. We that's the three count. Last week, that no matter what, if there is a rule to bend, Skrull has no problem bending it, and he made Jinder tap out to prove it. But. It is not Jinder who Skrull should be worrying about tonight. It is Adam Cole. They fired up Adam Cole nonetheless. And Adam Cole who welcomed this, whether he wanted it or not. He so? is proud to be in this one. And he is proud to fight both these men. So, uh, let's listen to Fairytale Land for a minute and say Adam, Adam Cole, Cole takes beats Jinder Mahal. How, I'm you know, laughing just thinking about it. There's a lot of variables but that head into that matchup. Do you think he could really beat Skrull after that? The, the, the hatred and the, uh, the vulgarity that he has for Marty Skrull cannot guide you to victory over Marty Skrull. It's almost playing to Skrull's well, strength. Well, I think it's... Yes. But there right. is no doubt that Adam and Cole you could be would as angry use or that arm with, with, after everything want, that has gone on for him in these last broken, two months. You know? There is no doubt he would swing with that arm no so, matter what. Just to get a, just to get revenge, just to get that sweet relief of victory over those who have done him wrong. And Cole right now is showing this is more than a match to him in the way he's treating Jinder. Every time he shares the ring with this guy, the, the aggressive side of Adam Cole comes out. It is not about Adam Cole, baby. It is just Adam Cole in that ring. I will say it to the moon and back. I will say it until my face turns blue that I do not respect Adam Cole. But I have to feel for him on this occasion. Oh, hang on, hang on. You're going to have to hold your point there because Adam, Adam Cole's looking well, to provide the finishing point already. Panama Cole, Sunrise baby. to Jinder. And every time he gets in the ring with Jinder Mahal, the Jinder count. Mahal walks One, out. two, uh -oh. Adam Cole. Sweet, sweet victory on Jinder Mahal. And I count no, it no. in less that, that than can't five be minutes. The victory that Adam Cole has waited two months for in a one-on-one -on -one ring. He just pinned the World Heavyweight Champion, but rest does not grant 
Adam Cole it's virtue for now it is on to the next Jinder is out of the situation right now he's out of the occasion the new party has arrived and it is a party that is held and led by a villain these two men Oh, they have had a story passed with one another I, over a different belt. But Skill has shown his true colors over these last thing. weeks. And I gotta be honest, I do like it. I do like seeing Skill asserting himself into a situation where two men that I didn't like were at the forefront of. Skill. Last week, tapped out Jinder Mahal to get this man second, but there really has almost been no difference to Adam Cole getting Skull second because of the almost ease in which he dismantled Jinder Mahal just now. Skull, though, is a different party altogether. I'm excited. I'm very, very excited for this one. And without further ado, we go, and Skrill begins the games. Um, I, Jinder Mahal like is a useless world champion. Point mate. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a point, please. I, I'd right, like it was an untitled matchup where he lost to. He, he lost, okay, he lost uh, in under Jinder five Mahal minutes. is Jeez. still your world heavyweight champion, baby. <laughs> oh, man. Mm, yeah, it kind of does. It's... It, no, it's you're right, it's not an accomplishment time, to beat Jinder Mahal. Almost everyone on the Every time Jinder Mahal it. loses or something, you, you think it matters. You, you, you talk about it like yeah, it's you're some, right, like, Jinder accomplishment. Yeah, you're right, because Jinder sucks. It's not, because you're not the world champ. No, I'm saying it's not yeah, an accomplishment to beat Jinder anyway, Mahal. No one gives a shit about if Jinder right now. Everyone cares about these two men sharing no, the I'm ring. Saying, and the hostility has already come out. I'll Marty let, I'll Skill, let this one from the get-go, is trying to bring out the anger within Adam Cole that he knows is in there. Cole trying to play his game. Skill wants to play his game. One of these men's got to cave in first. Just all about which one will do it. Beautiful move there by Skill. Into the cover on Cole, who kicks out. With such force that Skrill went flying backwards there. I gotta give it a Skrill, you know. Not a big fan of Cole, We gotta remember obviously. the next time that Skrill Adam has Cole and Jinder Mahal and are set to if, meet. If it was anybody Marty other than Skrill Jinder has Mahal, found his I'd ticket into it. And I guess that, that unofficially makes it so that Marty Skrill has a free ticket to WrestleMania. Because he has asserted himself well within this situation. He's got that match secured after the key wordings that were used to set up that matchup. And he made Jinder Mahal tap out last week. He has all the credentials of a number one contender. Oh yeah, absolutely. And Skill knows it. Skill's it happy he's a, done it. Even if he's not legally supposed to be in that match, he kind of pissed off both of these men by this point, wouldn't you say? So I'm sure... Well, it's all about every everyone I wants a piece of everyone right plan. now, and Cole's and sure getting a piece of both of those who he'd like to beat up. He's Skrull gone through one. Match, Can he go through another match. here? Cole with that crossbody now, hopes for something on Skrull, but Skrull not going to let it be. Counters him there. Cole counters back. God, oh, these two men able to read each other so well right now. Counter after counter brought out there, but Skrull brings it back down with that belly to belly. Skrull now. Uh oh. Double knees into the back of Adam Cole. Skrull into a cover and a count and a kick out. I think Skrull knew that wasn't going to do it. But go on. Oh. You know, say... Say what you will. 
about uh, you know it was a three minute match, a two minute match. Regardless, like he for had Adam a Cole match. He loses, with the but the count just now after that gorgeous Skrull moonsault didn't. by Skrull. They were not an the equal playing field. Villain would have that in him. He's really going this one off up. the radar to try and get somewhere with Cole. Great counter there to that super kick to the gut, or rather attempted one by Cole. These two men, so much back and forth. Super kick! Didn't tap his back Cole there, but somehow. the fatigue for Adam Cole oh. set in a little bit there. Struggled to capitalize right away. He, he tapped his back. What, what was Allowed that Skirl a chance to crawl, albeit back up to his feet. Uh-oh, this ain't looking good though for Cole, oh, for school even. On the outside we go now. Adam Cole may have something dangerous planned in mind. Or is he playing mind games of his own with school there? Because he ain't moving. He ain't moving. He's letting, he wanted to let school there maybe into a, a false sense of security. But school bends the rules to his oh. advantage. Much like he did last there. week to beat Jinder. Can he do it tonight to beat Cole? Because it's the cross-faced chicken wing. Cole is locked in tight. There's no ropes to get to. There's no way to break out of this other than with his own force. And that's going to be all his own she heart wrote. And determination. There's no way that Trump Adam Cole but is by out God, of Cole <laughs> has found a way out of it. Oh, super kick! What a oh, super kick by replay, Adam Cole let him out of that into one. the cover, but school tucked a finger under the rope, so Adam Cole couldn't get that three count. No comment. No comment. Misses with the scent on there. Looks for something from behind there, and Cole still counters it. These two men again fired up with one another now. Up on top rope, we go again. Can Cole I, I, get what he came for this time? He can superplex to Skrull. But Cole... I think Adam Cole's... I don't think that's Adam a smart Cole's move, because a big move like a superplex you know, or a suicide, suicide dive, dive takes more out of you. It's essentially a suicide dive, I would say, takes more to you than it does stamina, your think. opponent. It hurts a lot to deliver. Look at that, though, by Skrull. Tucked him over the shoulder, brought him down with almost a spine buster cover. Count. Oh, almost had him. Skrull, I think, is starting to get a little bit frustrated now that he can't put away Adam Cole. There's Cole, though, showing that he will still give yeah, every ounce he has in him. Skrull with another counter and another trip for a double knee in the back by Skrull. Where, oh, where is he going? Skrull taking to the outside here. Is the villain looking to do more mind games? Is the villain looking to bend the rules the again into his favor? Adam Cole is none the wiser. Skrull moves out of the way of the ref. Spinning heel kick, caught him in the face with the chair. History is a way of repeating itself. Lightning has a way of striking twice. Put him Skrull out of did misery. the exact same that Jinder last week, and he does it to Cole into the crossface chicken wing. Any advantage, Skrull will bend any rule, and it's paid off here. Yes, it has. Cole taps. Skrull <laughs> is the winner. And at the end of it all, once more, as the saga between Jinder and Adam Cole continues, yes. <laughs> the man who chooses to stand atop is Marty Skrull. This, this guy has his claim. This guy has his ticket to WrestleMania, but so too does it was Adam all for Cole. Nothing. It is going to be a meeting, and it is going to get physical in a flash.
It is all down to Marty's skill, though. How it shall be decided. And I don't think anyone can afford to wait any longer. Skill is the victor. On tonight, we say it again. Marty Skill beats the former world champ and the current world champ in some ways. All hail the villain.